Hi, it's Mark from Training Spark. In this video, we're going to take a look at version 4.12 of Learn Dash. So if we head over to the learndash.com forward slash release hyphen notes page here, this is where we tend to look at new releases and see what's included. And it's only been a week since version 4.11 came out. So it's not that long ago since we talked through this new course completion page. Um, so we've got another update pretty much straight after that. And the new feature in this one is this blended learning feature, which we'll look into shortly. So there are a few updates and, um, you know, there are a few here marked as performance updates. So potentially ones that might speed up your platform if you are running into issues. And one thing to point out is that the minimum required version for PHP now is 7.4. Um, and you know, more often than not, most people will have 7.4 or above. So that's actually quite an old version of PHP. So you probably don't need to worry too much about that. But if you are running old, uh, old servers or anything like that, then it's one to check out before you upgrade. There are a few bug fixes as well. And um, a couple of them, it says, are security fixes. Now, I'm not a massive fan of security fixes being bundled in with bigger updates like this. Um, I think security updates should be released separately because what this does is force everyone to apply a, a bigger update to address these security issues here. Um, and obviously that might require additional testing of new features and things like that. Whereas security fi fixes in my mind should be you know, a, a patch that gets released and, and um, you can update separately. But that's another issue. Uh, based on our own analysis of these security updates, looking at the code base, there weren't too um, much of a, an issue, but obviously check these out yourself. I won't go into detail about what what these actually are, but um, um, yeah, when we looked at them, we weren't too concerned about them. So let's have a look at the features and um, the, the new feature it says here is blended learning. So blended learning is what you would do if you ran perhaps a cohort based course where you have some elements of your course content that are delivered online via you know, courses, quizzes, interactive activities on your courses. And you might also have some of your content delivered face to face or on zoom calls. And that's what a blended course is. It's also sometimes called a hybrid course. And it means that it's a split of online and uh, live material. So what Lynch have done here and you know, blended is becoming a, a very common way of delivering courses. And you know, we, we sing the praises of blended learning and have done for a long time. It's a much better way of doing your courses than uh, just having purely online courses. But what they've done is added a way to manage that and deliver face-to-face -face or Zoom or sort of live online aspects of a course. So let's have a look at how that appears. So I'm on a course here in, um, in LearnDash. It's just a simple course with two lessons in it. And what we can do is open a lesson and edit it and there are some new settings here so if i go to settings and scroll down there's this new option here called external lesson and it says whether a lesson takes place in a virtual setting e.g zoom or in person so if you had a course that or a lesson that was a zoom call or a face-to-face lesson in a classroom perhaps you can add these to your courses so that they're tracked and marked as complete alongside the rest of your course so if i was to tick that we can say what type it is whether it's a virtual lesson or one that's in person so you know by takes place in person they probably mean in a classroom where you would show up and meet your tutor face to face and you can also say whether or not they require attendance so if I have this enabled, I can say maybe this is an in-person event and people do have to attend this and then click update. 
if I was to view the course now, uh, which I will do as a in a separate tab here, I'm logged in as a learner. I'm going to go to the course page here, and now I've enabled that. There's a new little tab here that says in person brackets required, and you know that's possibly a, a fairly uh, abrupt description of what this is, but there probably are ways to adapt that. But um, that just differentiates this type of course uh, from other course, uh, this this lesson from other lessons by saying that it's one that's delivered in person. And what you'll find here is that there's no option for me to mark that as complete. And that is because we've said require attendance, yes. And it says if require attendance is set to yes, uh, it means that the student will not be able to continue the course until they have been marked by an admin or group leader that they have attended the virtual or in-person lesson. So now it's on the admin or group leader to mark that person as having attended that face-to-face -face class. So let's take a quick look at how we do that. So suppose this face-to-face -face lesson has now happened. This person here I'm logged in as here, John Smith, has actually turned up to the course. So we now need to mark them as attended and complete so that they can com complete their course. So what we would do as the admin is go to their user profile, edit it, and then scroll down to where their courses are listed here under course info. And we can see here their course progress details. And we can mark it as complete just by ticking this to say that they have attended that course and we can update their profile. And now that's done, this person would be able to proceed to the next lesson and uh, you know, continue with their course because they have now been marked as complete. So it's a useful update. I mean, it's, it's fairly basic at the moment as far as blended learning goes, I mean, there's a lot more applications to blending learning than just you know simply flagging that something is blended learning and then having them marked complete. But it's potentially a basis for future updates and uh, different ways of doing things. The way you actually mark complete here could prove a bit tricky if you've got lots and lots of people in a in a group. If you have to go into each person in the classroom and, and do that one by one, this could potentially be a quite tedious way of doing things. So I imagine in the future, either LearnDash or a plugin provider will create some mechanism for you to be able to mark people as complete in bulk. That feels like a, a natural progression of this, uh, just to you know save you some time for having to go into every single user and, and do this sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, it's a useful, useful feature and um, it'd be interesting to see where they take this going forward. So we hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe to the TrainSpark YouTube channel.